Hello, I'm Vivian McGrath from beingunbeatable.com and in this video I'm going to be talking about passive aggressiveness as a form of emotional abuse. And that's because one of my followers um, asked me this question. She said, my partner was never aggressive or hostile or even violent, but doing more research, I think and believe that he was passive aggressive. So my question to you is, is passive aggressiveness emotional abuse? Yes, yes, yes. It definitely can be a form of coercive control and abuse. And it's really confusing because when somebody's passive aggressive, they appear to be being passive and nice and cooperative, but actually they're overtly being aggressive and rather hostile and even abusive. So while they appear one way, they're actually the opposite. And that can be very, very confusing. And what it's all about, it's a means to dominate you, control you. And it's also a way for them to make you feel inadequate and less than them because that makes them feel better about themselves and covers up a deficiency they feel about themselves. If they crush you and squash you and make you less than them, then they feel better. And the ways they do this, there's quite a number of ways that people can be passive aggressive. The first way is sarcasm and making jokes, often about your weight, your behavior, your appearance, your um, ethnicity, it could be it could be anything. And often they then follow the joke with, well, I'm just kidding. And then they'll gaslight you if you get upset by saying you're too sensitive. So, you know, joke, ha ha ha, about your weight. You get upset, oh, you're too sensitive. I was only joking, just kidding. Can't you take a joke? Passive aggressive behavior, my friends. Another way, is the silent treatment. They just go silent. And that's a form of punishing you. Because if they've behaved badly and you question them on it, and then they blow the silent treatment your way and it's cold as ice, it's a really effective way of just smoke bombing the whole situation. So it's no longer about their behavior. Uh, it's about you, you're being punished uh, because of something they don't like. And, and, and that just, you know, sidelines the real issue away after three days of silent treatment. You'll do anything to get them back and be nice because the being cold as ice is horrible. Or they might use um, psychological manipulation. Things like gaslighting, saying you're lying when it's actually them who are lying telling you you're exaggerating things, making things up. That sort of um, uh, gaslighting behave, behavior. Or they might just pick a fight out of thin air, but then tell you, I only behave that way because you, you know, you made me angry. It's all about you, not, not them. Or there might be uh, negative criticism, but disguised in the form of, I'm only being nice, you know, criticism about your weight, that you're a bit fat and you should lose a bit of weight, or you you don't look right when you dress that way, or, or whatever, negative criticism. Or they might comment about your friends and family, how they don't have your interest at heart. And when you, again, question them on this, because you think, well, I'm not that fat or ugly. My friends and family are lovely. They look, they care about me. Well, then you'll get the other passive aggressiveness, which is, well, I've only got your best interest at heart. Who can tell you this if I can't? No one else can tell you, only I can tell you this sort of stuff, and I'm only looking after you and your best interest sort of stuff. You know, so negative put down, nasty put down, and backed up with, well, I'm only looking after you because nobody else can tell you this sort of thing. Only I can. You know, really passive-aggressive. 
but it's confusing because they're making out that they're being nice to you and that they're having your interest at heart, which they don't because it's all about crushing your self-esteem, putting you down, putting you, pushing you to a rung lower than them so they feel better about themselves. Another one is guilt tripping. Like really, really guilt tripping you into, um, you know, their success or lack of it, their happiness or unhappiness is totally dependent on you. And so when you're not doing what they uh, deem you should be doing, then they make you feel guilty for it. You know, I've started smoking again because, you know, you, in fact, I had one woman say recently that her partner says to her, well, I can't give up smoking because the stress will just impact you and, and the children. And I don't want to cause that stress, you know, so I've got to smoke because of you. So really wacky logic, guilt tripping her into thinking that they can't quit smoking because it, it's going to be, you know, she's going to never let him, uh, never end, let him, what am I trying to say? Never let up on the saying how stressful it is being around him when he's not smoking. I hope that makes sense. Uh, another one is just stonewalling. You know, they just put up blocks. And, you know, it's not just partners who can be passive aggressive. You know, people at work, work colleagues can be. And what they do is they might just stonewall you where they just appear to be going along and working with, together with you, but then they sort of subtly destroy projects, miss deadlines, um, don't quite deliver what you're expecting in time, and it all is made to look like you're failing, but they're doing everything they can to help you. But you know, you're the one who's failed to deliver um, because actually of their stonewall. They might just be stubborn where, for example, um, if you're going to look at a car, they'll appear to go along and look at 20 cars with you, but when you come, want to make a decision about the car, they then come up with all these different excuses, reasons why that's not the right car, and you basically never, ever, ever do come to that decision at all. Or they might just outrightly sabotage what you're doing, completely and utterly undermine you in every way they can, but covertly, not overtly aggressive or hostile, just covertly sabotage what you're doing so that you just, you, you can't um, succeed with what you want to succeed in. Another way of being passive aggressive is threats that they'll hurt themselves. And I get this a lot from people who write to me when they, and I had this as well, uh, I'll kill myself if you leave me. You know, that's a real guilt tripping. If you leave me, I will kill myself. A threat to commit suicide, a threat to hurt the children. You know, that is, that is the ultimate in passive aggressiveness, in my opinion. Really guilt tripping you that if you do not stay with me, I will kill myself and you will be to blame and responsible for it, which you are not. You are never, ever, ever going to be to blame if they want to take their life. And never think that, you know. I had a psycho psychologist once ring me up when my ex tried to kill himself after I'd leave. And, and the psychologist said to me, which I was amazed at, um, will you come see me with my ex? Because... Uh, It'd be great to be able to work on the marital problems that made him try to kill himself. And I thought, wow, this is passive aggressive. And this is a psychologist who's trained as a psychologist, blaming me and the breakdown of our marriage for the fact that he tried to kill himself. Now, that is, it's, it's just wrong. You are not responsible. You are not to blame for it. So don't let them um, 
play that card of threats like that. And if you are receiving any threats like that, please go in and get help and support. I'll, um, I have listed domestic violence resources on my blog, www.beingunbeatable.com, so please get help and support. Another way they can be passive-aggressive is playing the victim. And man, narcissists are absolutely masters of this type of manipulation. They, especially when they're doing smear campaigns against you before or after you leave them, where they act like Mr. Nice Guy, Mrs. Nice Girl, you know, they're wonderful and they tell everybody about how you are the narcissist and you are the bully and how they are victim to your abuse, not the other way around. Classic passive aggressive behavior. And basically what it is with people who act passively aggressively is they have uh, a sense of inadequacy, they have feelings of anger, uh, hidden anger, um, and well that's another passive aggressive behavior, hidden anger, hidden like just nasty comments and put downs that just come out of nowhere. And then again, they just pretend they're being nice and helping you. Uh, anyway, I'll go back to what I was saying. So they've got this resentfulness and this hidden anger, and they feel like everybody else is more fortunate than they are, and that really riles them. And so they have to throw these barbs, these put-downs, these sarcastic comments. And it could be really, really uncomfortable being around them. And the worst thing is... They also know how to press your button, so they really press and push and push. And then some, at some point, you erupt and you get angry. And then they do the absolute passive-aggressive behavior, which is then go, well, why are you so angry? You know, like they're the victim. Why are you so angry? It's nothing to do with them pressing your buttons and riling you up. As soon as you leave, lose it, that becomes the issue and the problem. Why are you so angry? Really classic. And you know, there are times when you can be passive aggressive yourself and possibly not even be aware of it. Um, I, I have been. You know, there was a time in my relationship with my lovely husband now where our relationship went a little bit off piece, off track, and... Um, his self-esteem went down because he was having a real problem at work and I didn't seem, I didn't, I think subconsciously I didn't like that because he became the needy child rather than the adult I was used to and I resented him for that and I started to sort of kick, kick him a little bit when he was down and bully him and it was really awful until I learnt you know, his self-esteem went down further. And then I thought, wow, I don't like this person I'm becoming. What's going on in our relationship? And I realized that we'd just gone off. We weren't adult to adult. I was becoming parent to child. And a relationship is only good and functioning really, really well if you're two adults, adult to adult. You know, you don't depend on the other to make you feel better about yourself. You are secure in yourselves, so when you come together, you're a formidable, very healthy, whole, two in, whole individuals become a healthy pair. So uh, the other thing I learned is love is a noun, is a verb, not a noun. You don't just say you love somebody, you show them you love them with your actions, not just your words. And so the way I did that was to not be passive-aggressive anymore or to be aggressive but to just be assertive and the way you can be assertive is not to nag or scold or judge your partner or your ex or colleague or whoever it is that is being passive aggressive towards you because if you do that then you become part of the problem and they can uh, blame your behavior as bullying or um, the reason why they are that way, you know, they can use that to blame you. Um, 
And also it can force you into being that par parent. And that's what they want. They want you to be the parent and then they can be the rebellious kid. Uh, and, and then all the passive aggressive behavior comes out. The best thing to do is don't enable it. Don't nag, scold, criticize, judge, whatever. Just be assertive. And the way to do that is to say, when you do X, I, I feel Y. And that's owning, you're owning your own feelings, you're not blaming them. When you do this, I feel why. I prefer it if in future we can try Z. Now that's really assertive. It's not blaming them. It's not playing the victim yourself. It's just being assertive and stating what your needs are and how... Um, their passive aggressiveness makes you feel and you'd prefer it if they behave in a different way um, because that, you know, is you also setting a boundary. You're telling somebody else how you wish to be treated. And that's what healthy people do. They set really strong, healthy boundaries. Don't enable it and don't play the victim and and and. You know, victimhood is another form of passive aggressiveness and it's also a sign of codependency, that need to be needed and that sort of um, wanting to rescue somebody else, even if they don't want you rescuing them, but you take it upon yourself to do that. Or being a martyr. You know, lots of people are martyrs and they're not doing that to be magnanimous. It's a, it's a sort of passive aggressive form of behavior that um, is depending, making another person um, responsible or being dependent on that other person to make yourself feel better. While I'm rescuing you, looking after you, saving you, being the martyr for you, you're actually um, uh, not looking after your needs and well-being. And it is a form of passive aggressiveness that need to just be a victim, you know. Sorry, I'm going round and round a bit here because I've got lots of thoughts about this subject. But the bottom line is passive aggressive behavior um, can be found in, in, in your partner, a parent, uh, colleagues, even friends. And it is a form of emotional abuse and coercive control. So, yes, passive aggressiveness is a form of emotional abuse. And it might be <clears throat> that you are victim to it, and other times you might find in a relationship without realizing you're making the sarcastic jokes. You're covertly being hostile, but acting as though you're being magnanimous and passive and you know helpful and all that but really you're not so so that's it that's passive aggressive behavior i hope this video was helpful if it is please click the like button share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video